हेलो हाय एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू आर चैनल इन दिस वीडियो विल चेक आउट कॉन्वर्सेशन बाय अक्षर टाइटल डेस इंडिया इज डेंजरली डेंजरसली क्लोज टू हिंदू ग्रोथ रेट बाय डॉक्टर राजन इज फ्रॉम अक्षर श्रीवास्तव लेट शाम टू द वीडियो Hi everyone welcome to today's video so on a recent interview dr raguram rajan categorically said that india's economy is dangerously close to hindu rate of growth first and foremost let me say it out out right that i strongly disapprove of this particular terminology i do not think that any economist be it indian american foreigner should be using this type of a phrase so this is one what is the reason behind it it's very simple that the points that dr rajan was trying to communicate it could have simply been communicated if he would have stuck to economics this is my personal view point people can agree disagree to this now having said this he has raised a lot of points some of them according to me are very valid points and some of them are not valid points also i get a sense that there is a little bit of fear mongering that is happening when it comes to india's growth prospects so on this particular video i am going to present a very unfiltered commentary without taking any sides i'm just going to present plain facts show you data graphs charts so that you are able to better understand and grasp what is happening in the india's economy should you be worried about its prospect if you are a stock market investor or if you are planning your investment how does this impact you so this is going to be an extremely important video very humble request that please try to absorb commentary rationally one of the key reasons why i run this channel is so that i can present neutral commentary i give you facts you absorb it i do not want to become like a mainstream media where i'm just showing you one side of the equation and taking sides if you agree to this message and if you want to support the channel just a simple like from your side can help these type of videos reach out to more people so without wasting any more time let me just quickly jump into the topic and let me first and foremost discuss about the hindu rate of growth and the phrase associated with it so did dr raguram rajan create this phrase the answer is no he did not this phrase was created by an indian economist in the year 1978 and the message or the intent behind creating this phrase now i do not know why it was created but during that era india was growing at a slightly slower pace so the reason there was very simple that india was a young country we were building our systems processes lpg reforms that took place in 1991 accelerated our economy but before that we were a hyper local economy and we used to grow at roughly 4 to 5% gdp growth so that was a slow rate of growth and also back in the day india adopted a lot of socialist policies and that led to a slightly slower rate of growth of our economy and this economy was growing at roughly 4 to 5% and just to capture the essence of this socialism and a slow growth rate, this term was coined now i do not know why this phrase was brought back to life in the year 2023 by dr raguram rajan but whatever he wanted to communicate he could have simply communicated it without bringing this phrase into the mix so this is point number 1 now point number 2 is that the overarching view point that dr rajan has expressed it can be understood from this question number 1 that is there in front of your screen and i will read out some key segments from his response so what he has said is that india's growth rate is slowing down and as per even the r RBI the projections are lower so 4.2% is what RBI is projecting for the last quarter of this fiscal now is this commentary incorrect absolutely not so he is correct about that in terms of outlining what RBI has said so yes we are predicting a slowdown is it a cause to worry please continue to watch the video you will understand it more but i hope we can all agree to the fact that india is unfortunately growing at a slower pace now why is that the case and should we press the panic button for this you need to look at the absolute data and relative data so let me present that to you and the first key piece of information that you must look at is the rate of gdp growth in india and understand something called as the base effect so what is the meaning of that let me present that so here is the annual gdp growth rate of india and if you consider the last 3 4 years it had some major prominent events for example during the covid time india's gdp growth rate shrank right so here it became negative 23% negative 5.6% so this year was a really bad year from a gdp perspective now because the markets had fallen the gdp had fallen then the subsequent year became like dramatic rise year for example here the gdp growth rate was 21.6% which is like fairly fairly high right so and then what happened that because we had grown so much in just one year 
After that, the growth rate mellowed down. Then in the next six months, the India GDP was growing at 9.1%, then 5.2%, then 4.1%. Then suddenly in another six months, there was 13.2% growth and it kept on mellowing down. So these entire spikes, what they indicate is that, you know what, since in the last six months, the GDP has grown really fast. Now the GDP cannot grow at the similar rate. And this can be understood through a parallel example. So for example, consider that your salary is 100 rupees. Now next year you switch your job, you get like 20 lakhs. Now this is a 100% jump in your salary. Next year you will be lucky if you are able to grow it at 22-23 lakhs also, right? This will be also a 10-15% jump which is very very high. So something similar happens with the GDP. For example, during the pandemic, since the GDP shrunk quite a lot, there was a lot of room for rebound and therefore this rebound came here. Similarly, another rebound came here and whenever rebound happens, for example, this is going up, after that there is something called as base effect that comes into play. Because the economy has grown really fast in the previous quarter or previous two quarters, the next few quarters are going to mellow down. So this is the meaning of base effect. So please understand this 4.5-5% commentary in this context. A related point here would be that you need to see India's growth rate in context of the world economy. The entire world economy is slowing down and India's economy is also slowing down. So just to complete the thought here that number one, the four and a half percent number right now looks really bad, but is it really bad? The answer is no. What is the reason for that? It is something called as the base effect. Does that mean that because base effect is in play, India is fine. There is nothing wrong in India. No, nothing like this. The economy is slowing down overall worldwide also and in India also. So this is the first key piece of information you should take away from Dr. Rajan's commentary. Now in this context, he was asked another question that the RBI is keeping the monetary policy tight. So monetary policy tight meaning that the interest rates in the economy right now are high. For example, if you check here the data for US interest rates, you will see that it is almost making its last 10 year high. So US interest rates are also very high. Same thing is happening in India that RBI almost every three months it is increasing the interest rates. Now is this situation forever going to continue? No, that is not going to be the case. At some stage the interest rates are going to get cut and in this spirit it was asked that RBI is keeping its monetary policy tight which means that interest rates are high. So in this context Dr. Rajan has said that CPI inflation is above RBI's target range of inflation. Now is he factually correct here? The answer is yes. So he is absolutely right that the current inflation in the economy is higher than the target rate of inflation. Now does this mean that you should worry? The answer is no, you should not worry because even in inflation there is something called as base effect so to say which happens there. So let me quickly explain that to you. Now inflation in simple terms means increase in price rises. For example if you are buying an apple today at 100 rupees a kg and next year it goes to 106 rupees a kg then what is the inflation? The inflation is 6%. Now when you are increasing the prices again by 6 rupees, then what is the inflation here? The inflation will be less than 6%. So what happens is that if there is a sudden price increase from 100 to let's say 150, then it is very likely that in the third, fourth, fifth year, the rate of price increase is going to slow down. Why? Again, because of base effect. So this entire debate that the target rate of inflation is 4 to 6% and India currently right now is higher and therefore RBI will have to increase the interest rates. That is not completely correct or logical and there is a little bit of fear mongering there. So then comes the quick discussion on manufacturing and service oriented jobs and the quality of jobs that are being created. So in this context, a question around PLI or production linked incentive scheme was asked to Dr. Rajan that how far do you think that PLI schemes are successful? So he presented very relevant data here and he ended up saying this and I will quote from this particular snippet that by the government's own stats, 15% of proposed investments have come in, but only 3% of predicted jobs have been created. So yes, this number is correct and there is no anomaly here. Then he went on to say that it will end up creating only 0.6 lakh crore of jobs, a small dent in the jobs India needs over the same period. Then there was a quick discussion on the entire topic that should we prioritize manufacturing oriented jobs or our increase, our manufacturing base, or should we look elsewhere? So here Dr. Rajan has said that, you know what, I'm not against the manufacturing sector. What I'm saying is that we should try to focus more on service oriented jobs. Now I do 100% agree with this viewpoint. The reason there is fairly simple that if you think about what led to the growth of Bangalore or cities like Hyderabad, it was one could say was the IT boom. 
now it is a service oriented job it has literally lifted the incomes of several people now i know many people would not agree to this viewpoint bolenge that you know what it mein jobs mein tankhat nahi nahi hai salary is not high etc etc agree but if you actually look at the golden days of it industry service sector job amount of salary that people were making were very very high now it has started to stagnate so maybe it makes more sense that rather than going the manufacturing way we need to focus more on service sector jobs and this can also be backed by looking at the data from developed countries that almost every major developed country has a very good service sector economy so maybe first we grow our manufacturing base then move on to service sector economy or maybe we can just leapfrog that manufacturing innovation and move directly to service sector india has already done that when it comes to it industry and similarly if our focus shifts towards growing our it sector jobs or service oriented jobs then there is a lot more youth that can benefit from that particular revolution then there was another quick point that was discussed on the adani saga that has been playing out i have already made a lot of videos so i will keep this commentary really really short so it was said that adani crisis has sparked worries for indian financial contagion and ability to carry on infrastructure projects what measures government should take to improve oversight of private family companies to address worries of hinderberg allegations now here dr rajan has said let's see sevi is doing good work regulatory framework is strong etc all good good points but again a lot of questions are still dangling that no one knows the ownership of those mauritius funds which has been holding and trading adani stocks does it need help from the investigating agencies so yes these type of problems should be addressed whether you support adani group whether you do not support adani group as a stock market investor who is looking to better the indian investment ecosystem or better the indian economy having more transparency you tell me categorically whether that helps or it does not help so the more transparency there is FII's will feel more comfortable investing in Indian companies and even you and I as normal investors will feel more comfortable so that is the entire point and again keeping the politics aside if you do a rational thought process analysis then i think this is a sensible commentary then came a very important discussion on the NPA picture and the AQR exercise so let me quickly explain that so basically what happens is that you must have seen Vijay Mallya Nirav Modi scam hazar hazar crore rupaye ka loan took that money ran away defaulted now they are tweeting sitting from UK so which is like really bad it should not have happened. and then after that what happened was that dr rajan has been credited with creating this aqr exercise now aqr what simply means is that banks sometimes what they say is that hey our asset quality is really good and the loans that we have given out are very very strong so who does the audit and what exercise can you do in order to independently assess whether this is right or wrong so rbi came up with a framework of doing asset quality review which was called as aqr and dr rajan has been credited with it and in a way this has helped the indian banking system a lot for example look at the time right around 2013 14 15 it was not a good time for the indian banking industry a lot of psu scams were happening recently this entire adani issue blew up now the psu banks also fell but it was not as if that year was like massive bloodbath when it came to psu banks the npa problem to a very large extent has already gone away and bank cleanup has taken place due to which the indian banking industry is very very solid right now even i put a lot of my money into indian banks simply because of the fact that a lot of banking cleanup has happened so this is a simple point now what is the current government doing about it now are they good are they bad i don't know in case you have more information please put it in the comment box okay so now comes the most interesting question that he was asked that you were seen in bharat jodo yatra led by rahul gandhi do you think it was a right decision for an independent economist like you to participate in a yatra organized by a political party okay now people can have different view points around this and there are two sides to this coin so he is trying to become the next finance minister of india if congress wins vagera vagera and all those things are correct and that is the reason why he might have aligned himself to bharat jodo yatra so that is one side of the equation the other side of the equation is that hey he is a normal citizen he has every right to go wherever he feels like he has every right to express his political ideology even if you consider him to be political so both the sides can be taken but the practical view point to any rational person here would be this that see so yes there is a little bit of fear mongering that is being unnecessarily done it's not as if that our indian banking system is bad or sebi is bad or bunch of other different things are bad in india or india is growing at a very slow rate yes whatever slow down has happened it has happened because of world economic affairs that has been there it's not as if that there is a major pitfall that is there now why did i shoot this video the reason is fairly simple that there is a lot of fear mongering that i'm seeing right now in the market now these type of view points are presented it generates a lot of heat phrases like hindu growth rate are blown out of proportion so just to present that new 
neutral analysis i had presented this video a lot of view points expressed by dr rajan were right no doubt about that and a lot of view points that were presented by dr rajan in my opinion could have been presented better now what is the implication of the stock market am i still bullish am i bearish am i neutral so number one i am bullish but having said this that given the recent slowdown or recent relative slowdown in the indian economy and the world economy so i feel that the sideways movement in the indian market and the world market is going to last a little bit longer i keep on giving a lot of useful information to all the members of the youtube paid community member section i talk about whatever i'm buying selling in the indian stock market or or in the world stock market so in case you want to get access to that close group community you can join the links in the community box my viewpoint will be neutral i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did do press the like button and share it with your friends and i will see you soon